Hello and welcome to Scripture of the Day. Maybe you're thinking right now, that's not our auditorium. And you're right. This is Compass Bible Church Aliso Viejo. This is the church that sent us out to plant in Huntington Beach. And this auditorium, well, it, first of all, it's about the size our new auditorium's gonna be. And their chairs have the kind of cushion our new chairs are gonna have. I am actually gonna be here preaching this weekend. Uh, they've been asking me to come back and I'm trying to bring encouragement for every Christian from Romans 1, 8 to 12. And so maybe you're thinking, wait a minute, if you're gonna be there, what's happening at our church, Compass HB? I'll tell you what's happening at our church. What's next for scripture of the day? You're gonna find out the future revealed because today's chapter is Revelation 12. That means we only have 10 more chapters till Revelation 22, and then we're done. I mean, Team 52, the last pound. So we need to have a celebration uh, that we're gonna call, I think, the last pound. And I think it's gonna be uh, on Saturday, April 29th. Did I say that right? Is that correct? Um, but let's do that. Saturday, April 29th, we'll have dinner after the five o'clock worship service, and then we'll come back for the last pound. Uh, the celebration of the end uh, of all 52 weeks, uh, 12 months, 260 chapters of reading the Greek New Testament. And then let me just tell you right now, after Revelation 22, there will be no more daily videos on scripture of the day, at least not for this next season. So we gotta make the most of the time we have together in these videos. We gotta go out on fire, revived for the Lord. But then what are we gonna do next? No videos, what are we gonna do? Hey, you should go to church this weekend at Compass HP and you should find out what God has for us next. I think it's gonna be very exciting, but I wanna talk with you right now about today's chapter, Revelation 12. And this is a very interesting chapter, perhaps the most controversial chapter in the entire book of Revelation. Now, a lot of people, they'll say about the book of Revelation that it's so symbolic, it's so hard to understand. Well, that is true of today's chapter. Today's chapter, I would say, is unique from the first 11 chapters that we've read so far in that Number one, and I hope you can open your Bible and look at it with me, I hope you've read the chapter because if you're just trying to get spiritual life off these daily videos on YouTube, no great revival in history has ever come from YouTube. Mostly they didn't have YouTube, but also because revival comes from the Bible. And so if you go to Revelation 12, I did, I wrote some notes. And the first thing you'll notice is it doesn't say after this, or then, in fact, if you start flipping back through all the other chapters, we, it's been like this heavenly vision has been after this, then I saw after this, behold. Now this one, there's no time continuation. So this one kind of opens up the door of when does Revelation 12 even take place? Some people, they wanna move the chapters of Revelation all around. If you pay attention to the beginning of every chapter, most of them are in some kind of sequential chronological order. This chapter does not have something like that. And then it says two times here in verse one and verse three, and a great sign appeared in heaven. Or, or in verse three, and another sign appeared in heaven. So now it's flat out saying, some people are like the whole book symbolic. No, the book knows when to tell you that it's presenting a symbol. And that's what it says here. I wanna give you now a sign. Now I'm gonna give you something symbolic. In fact, then I have another symbol to give you. And so the first symbol and the picture created here is one of the most horrific, compelling images uh, that I've ever heard of. This, it's the idea of a very intense scene where a woman is in labor about to give birth to a baby, but then behold, there is a dragon like waiting for this woman to give birth so that the dragon can like attack or eat the baby. A very compelling, horrific image. I, I mean, uh, for some reason, a lot of TV shows and movies want to include really intense birth scenes. 
And then also a lot of TV shows and movies, they want to have dragons. Boom. Here's a mashup right here. Lady gives birth, baby eaten by dragon. What's next? That's Revelation 12. It's a super compelling image. And, and what does it mean? Well, some things we can say very much for sure. We can say that the dragon, this great red dragon that you see as a sign in verse 3, that is most definitely Satan. And you want, want to know how I know that for sure? And if anybody believes differently, they are wrong? Well, it says so right down in verse 9. Now, the dragon is the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. In fact, he's also also referred to as the dragon, that ancient serpent, the devil and Satan, in chapter 20, verse 2. So clearly the dragon in this picture is the devil. Now, what about this baby, this male child that the lady gives birth to, this male child that then is caught up to God in his throne so the dragon can't get the baby? Well, the male child, it says, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. If you just keep reading Revelation in chapter 19, verse 15, when Jesus comes riding down on the white horse, he is referred to as one who's going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. So the baby is Jesus, the dragon is Satan, which really begs the question then, who is the woman? And that's where there might be some more debate about the interpretation. But this woman, remember, this is a symbol. This is not an actual woman. So our natural inclination might be to think, well, Mary is the mother of Jesus. Well, here it says this woman is clothed with the sun. She has the moon under her feet and on her head is a crown of 12 stars. That it takes a lot of people back to a cross-reference Genesis 37 where Joseph, remember, has a dream where the sun and the moon and 11 stars are bowing down to him. And remember, that's about his father Jacob and his 12 sons, the 12 sons of Israel who become the 12 tribes. So a lot of people, because of that reference of the sun and the moon and the 12 stars, would see this woman as Israel producing Jesus that the devil is trying to destroy. Another thing about this symbolic image that might be hard for us to understand is the time that is given. You'll notice here in verse six, if you look with me, the woman when she flees into the wilderness, and I'm not 100% sure what that is all about, but there's a place prepared by God for the woman to get away from the devil, and she's gonna be nourished there for 1,260 days. So this is a time period, if you've studied end times prophecy, you've heard about the three and a half years, the 1,260 days, the 42 months, the time, times, and half time, which has gotta be my personal favorite, coolest way to say. But that's talking about what we believe to be the three and a half year periods that the seven year tribulation is broken up into. Now, it, we, we start to get in verse seven into a war in heaven. And the war is between Michael and his angel fighting against the dragon and his angels. So I just wanna make a very important here point here if I can still talk to you, is that Michael and the angels versus Satan and the angels, that's a fair matchup, okay? A lot of times, because Satan, the devil, the dragon, because he's the big bad guy, the head honcho of evil, a lot of people compare Satan to God. Let's just make it very clear. No one is like God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the three in one. There is no one like our God. No one compares on God's level. God created a lot of angels. There's Michael and two thirds of the angels and they're a good match for Satan and one third of the angels. So Satan's comp is Michael. And you might wanna do some deep diving on Michael. You might wanna go to Daniel chapter 10 and see how it appears to me that Michael and Jesus are fighting the Prince of Persia who might be the devil. Uh, very interesting Daniel 10 reference. How about Jude verse nine? There's an in, a reference to the archangel Michael as well. So we got a, an angelic, we're being given a vision of an angelic battle scene. And then as Satan falls from heaven with a third of the stars with him, 
Notice that it refers to Satan as the accuser of our brothers. He accuses them day and night before our God. So maybe you've heard uh, this idea that the devil's trying to accuse me, the devil's trying to get to me. That idea of Satan being the accuser, this is the specific reference to that concept, which has become very popular that Satan is accusing the brethren. He's the accuser of the brethren. Uh, Revelation 12 is where it says that's what Satan does. Now you can see a couple more deep dives that you could get into is you could go to the book of Job chapters one and two and see Satan accusing Job. Or check this out to continue our Zechariah theme that we had last week. Check out Zechariah 3, where he's accusing the high priest there, but God cleanses the high priest from his sins so Satan can accuse him no more. When the accuser comes and tries to make you feel guilt and shame, you remember to tell Satan where your sins are that they've been washed by the blood of the lamb. They've been forgiven. The debt has been paid and your sins lie off the, the, at the bottom of the sea, off, thrown off the HB pier, never to be washed up on shore again. But Satan, he's out there accusing. So those are some of the things that I can say to you for sure that is going on here in this chapter of symbolism. Now there's a lot more speculation and controversy about Revelation 12 and it ends with uh, the dragon standing on the sea and here comes the beast. And so we will get to the continuation of this vision when I see you for more, because Lord willing, we got 10 chapters left to go and we're gonna crank this out to the end. We're gonna make some of the best videos. We've got some plans, we've got some, some, some prayers. We wanna see revival. We wanna see the glory of Jesus revealed. So I hope to see you for more right here. Well, not really from Eliso Viejo, but here on the video, here on scripture of the day.